I know it sounds like an exaggeration, but you can actually un your life with very little changes and become the best version of yourself. It took me over a year and a half to find out what truly works because quite honestly, when I started this journey, I didn't think I was able to ever get better. When I got dumped via email, I was heavily pregnant and had only a few days to literally move my entire life from Hawaii back to Germany into my old little kid's room at my parents' house. And I was absolutely miserable. Now I boiled it down to six steps and one crucial bonus step that I will share with you at the end to get back on your feet. Because I know you're saying you're fine. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. I know I said I was fine. But to be honest, I, I'm better. I feel so much better. This is really gonna help you get back on your feet. One of the first things I took to heart was really understanding that if you have a broken heart, if one thing in your life is broken right now, make sure you're not letting everything else go because you don't wanna wake up with a whole new set of other problems six months from today. So first, what does reinventing yourself mean? It's not supposed to be the super toxic, you have to change every aspect of your life. This is actually rooted in major insecurity, but what this is about is about upgrading what you currently have going. If you do stay to the end, you will learn the one thing that really kept me going and made this whole journey so much easier. But let's get into the first step. The worst thing you could do is to disappoint yourself. So every step we're going through, make sure you adjust it to where you're currently at. Don't say just something crazy that it's not achievable because you don't want to disappoint yourself because that way is going to spiral you into not taking any action. The first thing I want to take you to heart is start going outside, going on walks. I kind of learned this by accident because I was forced to go outside because my daughter used to only sleep when she was in a stroller. So I would be going on miles on end walks because that's the only way she was able to sleep. Um, and so going outside really gave me so much clarity. It really helps you to get out the house. It, it's something that you can build a routine on. It doesn't, you don't have to have a daughter to go on walks. You can just um, either do it with a friend or just set yourself a routine where you say every morning I'm gonna go out for X amount of minutes and get the steps in or after work when I come home I will go on a walk. This really changed it in any day now where I feel like I for some reason I don't go on a walk because something happens my body can tell it's it's the bizarrest thing but your body gets used to walking so much look on your phone you can see right now how many steps you're currently making for example if you're making 4,000 steps right now don't say you want to walk 10k steps a day just say i want to walk 6,000 steps a day and if you keep going if you prove you can do it for a week then you can adjust it and increase the amount but you don't want to just set some crazy number you're probably not going to go stick through it so make sure you're using an amount that's actually doable it helps to look on your phone um, sometimes even watches can track how many steps you're making but that's just a good way to keep you accountable um, I always have that with my friend I always they're like oh my gosh how many steps do you have and I compete with my mom it's kind of a fun thing so try to get more steps in that's such a crucial way to clear your head to get out of bed and move forward and not let your body run in bed all day that's the worst thing you could possibly do if you have a broken heart or if you just have something heavy going in your life try to get out the house. It's so, so, so important. And even if it's just for 10 minutes, people say do what you love and you'll never work another day in your life. And although this sounds amazing, it's probably not possible for everyone. What we can say for sure is that we love doing things we're good at. And you can almost apply this in every aspect in your life. For example, even sports. I love swimming and snowboarding and it's not because it's the greatest sport. It's just, I happen to be doing it my whole life and that's why I'm good at it and that's why I enjoy doing it. And you can do that with your work. Try to get really good at your job. I used to be a cleaner. So when I was cleaning houses, I tried to really research what are the best products, what are natural products. I really got a really good reputation on my cleaning skills and so I got better jobs. I had bigger houses to clean, better clients and better clients paid me more money, thus I had more money. With that, I could do more things. And maybe you have a job that you're not currently enjoying, but try to get better at it. And I think that might lead you to an opportunity that you don't see right now, but in the future will help you tremendously. If you're not currently working, try to apply with hobbies, try to um, apply with art, drawing, with there's cooking, there's so many things you can apply that to. And so this leads me to the next one, and that is keep educating yourself. Your brain cells need some stimulant you can't or unless you have a superpower for me i realized when i wasn't educating myself because i was with a baby 24 7 i was very lonely i had no one to talk to really besides my family here i felt like i wasn't educating myself i felt like oh my god i'm become, i'm being stupid like I've, I've i'm not learning anything i'm not doing anything with my mental capacity and so 
what I did, I tried to educate myself every single day. I tried to watch YouTube videos, like even if it's like five minute YouTube video on how to improve your cooking skills or how to make organic food for your baby. I mean, there's so many options that you can try to educate yourself further. It doesn't always need to be rocket science. It can be something simple. It can be art. It can be anything, honestly. It just makes your makes you feel so much better because you're like, oh my gosh, today I learned something about social media marketing. Today I learned something how to make better YouTube videos. Today I learned something about editing. I learned something about parenting. I mean, there's so many aspects and you just, it really lifts you up having some kind of education every single day. It doesn't need to be this crazy long hour, but just small bits and pieces where you're educating yourself. Such a game changer. I'm really trying to not make this this typical eat better and like work out and do the basic things that everyone need, everyone knows. But this one thing you really need to start doing is to stop eating like shit. Like really, you need to cut eating all this bad food that you're eating. I realized that when I started eating the healthiest I possibly could, I felt so much better because in my pregnancy, I was super craving chocolate. I was eating a bunch of chocolate. I realized all this sugar I was taking in was not good for my body. And so I really recommend try to eat as much organic food as plant-based as possible. I know organic food is not available for everyone. It's, it can be really expensive depending on where you live. But try to do that. It really, you, it's health as well, as cheesy as it is, but it really makes such a big difference. So trying to eat as healthy as possible. And it doesn't mean you have to have this toxic relationship with food and never have ice cream and never have pizza. Enjoy that pizza, enjoy the ice cream, enjoy the chocolate. I think I heard this one thing, when you're excited for junk food, you were so excited before and feel like after. Whereas with good food, you don't feel so excited, but you're gonna feel great after. Going on the feel great longer for the day and not just excited for those little moments. Something that might be worth considering. This one's gonna be controversial. I'm sure you love shopping, but have you ever got rid of something? It's the best. Like getting rid of stuff is, it feels so amazing. It's like one of the best things you could possibly do for your mental health and your strength for the day because you're going to feel like you have less to organize less to declutter because if you get actually rid of the things they're not be able to create any more mess so i like to try to have every week some special corner whether it's my closet i reorganize my entire closet i get rid of stuff whether it's some makeup or some old drawers with a bunch of junk from pens and stuff that you don't use try to declutter an area in your room in your bathroom your shoes like there's so many areas in your life that you could be decluttering because that way you will have so much more clarity i'm sure you realize when you have a very clean room you sleep better as well decluttering is such a game changer it will save you so much time in the long run it will make you feel really really clear in your day i can't believe it but every time my closet there's less stuff i can just pick something i like and not like the 10 workout sheet or the 10th shirt I'm gonna use for gardening or some excuse I'll use oh I'll use that when I have to go paint my room like when I'm gonna paint my room I mean <laughs> it's ridiculous so get rid of stuff donate it give it to friends so much better take yourself on solo dates I don't care if you're in a relationship or not the way you treat yourself sets the entire standard how everyone else around you is gonna treat you so Go on little adventures by yourself. It may, gives you so much confidence just eating on your own, going to the movies alone. Like there's certain thing about doing things on your own that make you feel so much better. And it's, if you don't have a lot of people in your life, it's a great opportunity to meet new people. If you love pottery, you can go to a pottery class and maybe you'll see people who also love pottery. Or if you like cooking, maybe you can t attend a cooking class and you realize, oh, there's people who also enjoy cooking. And so that's a great way to also build your community offline. Um, and I think that's something that we kind of forget because we're always like, oh, I have to have someone with me. And me being forced for quite some time now, having to rebuild an entire friend group that I all lost. I always have my baby with me, but still I feel like I'm trying to do little things, just the two of us, um, just to get me out the house. It's, it's so, so, so important. Because honestly, you're going to set a standard if someone's trying to impress you with like, little things you can do by yourself. You're like, it's like, I'm doing that on my own all the time. Like, it's not that crazy. Just for you as a reminder. This one is not talked a lot about. I feel like it's getting more into people's minds, but go to therapy. I've been in therapy for a very long time and I think that's really, really important. There's nothing better than having professional help. 
I know it's very difficult to find spots, um, to have it covered by insurance, not to have it covered by insurance, paying it out of pocket and all these things. It's, it's very, very difficult and draining and finding the right therapist can be very difficult, but going to therapy is such an important part to reflect not having opinion that's like heavily weighted from friends and family, but just having an objective opinion on a topic can be such a crucial game changer for you to heal, for you to improve your life. You don't always have to have the worst time in your life to go to therapy. You can go to therapy if everything else is going great because it's just gonna reinforce you to feel stronger, to feel more confident, to make better decisions. I highly recommend because you have to understand, especially if you're going through a hard time, you don't have to go through it on your own. You don't have to do it all alone. You can get help from other people. There's no shame about it. It's not your job to conquer everything on your own. Now let's talk about the bonus. It, that's really what made all the difference in my life because I realized I, I needed that so bad. And try to find that in your life is so, so important to not give up in this journey of trying to re not reinvent yourself, but just to improve what you currently have going is to find your why. Why are you doing this? Like, why do you wanna become better? Why do you wanna be more disciplined? Why do you wanna feel better? It's just not always trying to become the best at a certain topic. It's more about like, how can you live a life you enjoy in the present moment? For me, it was my daughter. As cheesy as it sounds, like I wanna give her the best life possible. I wanna be able to provide for her on my own. I want to do so many things. I can only do if I'm well, if I'm feeling well, if I'm doing well, if I'm mentally strong, strong in all aspects of my life. That's a huge why. Your why could be just yourself. Do it for yourself. You don't need to always have an external person, but finding that why can be sometimes even financial goals. Like I want to retiring rich. That's a good why, like why not? That could be a why for you to get out of bed, start your business, get a really good job. It could be to create a family someday. You wanna be a really healthy person so you can have healthy relationships with people. So finding that why you're doing it is such a key driver for you to do it. It's not enough seeing people on Instagram, YouTube, whatever, being like, do this, do this. Like, no, it needs to come from within. You need to have a strong reason why you're doing this. And if you don't have that right now, try to figure that out. Like that could be your first step. Try to figure out why do you wanna do all this stuff? Why why do you want to go on these walks? Why do you want to eat healthier? Why do you want to work on your mental health, your physical health, your well-being? Why do you want to do all that? Try to find that out. That's super important. If you don't mind sharing, I'd love to hear your, your why as cheesy as it sounds. I, I love reading people's ideas and why they do certain things. You're gonna have days where you're not gonna to commit to everything you thought you were, and that's okay. The most important part is that you forgive yourself, try the next day, and don't give up. It's This journey isn't gonna be straightforward. The best thing you could do is just keep standing up and be flexible. You have a bad day, that's okay. Have a next day and that day is gonna be extra great. And so forgive yourself on this journey. Don't be so harsh on yourself. It's gonna be a long journey and, and if you stick through it, you're gonna see incredible results. You're gonna be so proud of yourself. You're going to be incredibly proud on yourself for not giving up. If you're still struggling, you can watch the video right here where I help you get over a pretty difficult time, especially if you have been betrayed. This video will help you get through it. Oh. <laughs>